We're good to go. Yeah. So in the interest of time, um, Eric, if you're okay, we should keep the agenda as is and right. continue the discussion. And then um, for those who are taking the Etherpad notes, Eric, you can come back and when we have at the last minute, five minutes. If there's well, issues, sure. we can move here. Okay. Let's go. For timing and for timing, when do you want me to talk about um, the message I sent to sort out use cases in architecture? So, <laughs> Kathleen, we should, I think it'll ebb and flow between both the use cases and the architecture draft. Okay, so after use cases, I'll um, explain what I was thinking. Okay. Thank you. Right. Uh, so, um, milestones update. Let's. Uh, Kathleen, are you up for that? Uh, sure. Uh, we needed to get agreement to drop. Um, so you don't have, do you have them on the next slide or no? I uh, don't have them on the next slide, actually. Okay. So we had one that we were just going to drop, and then the architecture, we have to, I, I think um, this might be better at the end. Right to figure out when we can move the architecture milestone to. I, I, I think deciding now would be That's difficult. Correct. Okay. Um, the one that we could. Uh, where is it? I'm so, sorry. So basically, it was a toke bind. Yes. Yeah. So it's a work. If the working group agrees, we can drop that. We'll remove that as a um, as a milestone. Is there any disagreement? No. Okay, so we can we can confirm that Kathleen on the mail. Yep. Um, I'll send something out now. Great, thanks. Yeah, so basically we, we need to shift all of the calls for adoption and our hope was that we could do the call for adoption on the architecture, the yang, and the interaction models. But as Kathleen said, we should put a placeholder for the last five minutes to see if we're ready to do that. Okay, so we have five minutes. We're kind of over time here. Yep, we should move, keep moving. Move forward. Yeah, so I guess we'll do use cases next then. Yes. Michael. So do you have my slides? Can you project them? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Ned typing or somebody else? Somebody else. Oh, sorry, that might have been me doing those. I'll mute. Sorry about that. All right, you worry. We're not seeing slides yet, Ned. Okay, I think I have it here. And if we're downloading the slides ourselves, there's two different copies. I assume we want the one that says fixed footer in the title? Uh, yeah, there's no yeah. material differences. It's yeah. the other one you can get deleted. I was trying to figure out, but in the interest of time, I just did a quick upload as opposed to, because Richard, when you submitted it, you submitted it as a new. As a new. So 
So when I went to approve, oh, is there an update? Is there an update option now too? Yeah, this slide. I didn't think so. I didn't. Oh, I didn't yeah. see that. I'm just happy that we can upload them. All right, so, so uh, you, you're seeing stuff now, right? We're seeing stuff now. Yeah, thank you. Um, so um, 05 got posted. Um, I really wanted this posted last month, um, and I'm going to tell you that. Uh, you can go to the next slide if you like. Um, I, um, I mean, we had the side meeting. Most of the people here on this call were there, um, and we had a lot of notes. And but we we went around a lot of interesting circles. Um, and uh, going back to the notes, I don't find a lot of concrete actions that I can put into play. Um, a lot of we had a lot of conversation about. Um, different kind of levels of assurance uh, between different things. And uh, it, it, that's, that's I, I, I found that very difficult in the end to, to get into the use cases because they weren't specific to specific things and uh, it wasn't there wasn't clearly new use cases I needed to include. Um, so um, I, it's still a work in progress. I think there's some more pieces I can come up with, pull out of that, but um, a lot of it is kind of is, is a bit lost. Changes that are there um, obviously included the teeth case, um, and I've put in some text from uh, SP 800-155 on what are roots of trust, um, and I'm I'm happy with that. I mean, we had a long conversation with Alyssa about what does it mean, um, and uh, and I want to point to Rich Salt, who also like me believes uh, didn't realize that root Roots of trust are not trust anchors. So um, that this word root of trust is 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 very um, niche, even among security people. Uh, maybe worse among security people because it's oh it's it's confusing. So I don't I'm not saying we're going to be able to change it, but um, I think that's something to to think about going forward. And I think terms like this root of Trust for update and root of trust for verification and stuff. I think that's compounding the the uh, situation, and I I suggest avoiding it if you can. Um, so I know it's hard to get people who are deep in, in a particular uh, area to change terminology or not invent too many new ones, but I think this is going to bite us later on when it goes to wider IETF review. Um, it's going to you're going to get questions. You're like, what? And they're like, well, no, it's not a trust anchor. It's a, you know, oh yeah, right. Okay. So just something going forward. Maybe we, we need to hit them over the head with that. What I was going to say. Next slide. Oh yeah. So I added some 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 high level text about passport check and um and uh, uh, sorry passport and background check. I don't intend to keep the language, but I, there isn't any in the architecture document yet. So uh, I just put something so that I have something to refer to. Um, I don't I don't really want to keep it there. That's not my goal. Um, and the major work is, aside from a lot of little tweaks, a lot of little bits, including, for instance, um, TCG references now, the, the uh, these documents, and a bunch of other things that people have suggested. Um, what I've gone down through is, as I said in March, um, is put a, put a template in. So the, the major edit I made to it since March is added the attestation type path for a background check, and I've gone through pretty much every use case that we had except for some of the uh, sub sub cases, um, and I put that in put that in as, as best as I can. Um, I think that you will disagree in some cases about things, and I think that's good, and there's some places I couldn't make a decision as to, for instance, what the, the test station type was going to be. Um, can we have the next slide? So what did I learn doing this? It was interesting, okay, actually. Um, of the use cases, um, four are background checks, seven are passports, and eight are to be determined. I don't know what, what they should be. 
Um, and I observed that some things that people complained were, you know, well, isn't this the same as this? And I observed that actually they differ by attestation type. And so that's one of the reasons I didn't want to deduplicate things too soon is because I'm, I'm sure there's other things that other attributes of the use cases that are probably going to show up and we're going to say, oh, yes, that's two use cases because it differs in how you do things. And I hope that's a useful thing, and I hope this is really what I was going for at the beginning. So I just want to make an observation here. This is Dave Taylor. Um, I think out of the use cases, I think there might be two different categories of use cases here. Uh, some of the use cases are really generic and don't uh, try to specify the solution. And so like 5.4 and probably many of the ones that are black right now are probably in that category. Because I think the passport versus uh, background check is often a property of a solution to a use case. And so the other category is some of the use cases in here really are specific, you know, solutions. And so, you know, Android key store and a bunch of other things pointed to in the, in the use case document are specific solutions. Any specific solution will either be background check or passport or hybrid or whatever. Um, and so I think it is natural, the fact that you have some that are black or TBD and some that are not, and it has to do with whether it specifies a solution. So for example, in the ML confidential ML model, which is just the, the black one that I'm staring at right now, 5.4, there's gonna be passport solutions and there's gonna be background check solutions. And the general use case is agnostic. Yes, you're absolutely right that, that on, on all points. So, so I, I would also suggest that if we can't decide, that means that the use case is probably not detailed enough. And you're really saying the same thing. We haven't got, the, we don't have enough information such that someone could actually put together a solution. And so it's probably indicative of we just don't understand that well enough. And uh, that means it's not really informing our, our architecture or other things like that um, well enough. And I think that's something that, that um, we either need to go and, and find some people that are doing, in this case, you know, confidential machine learning models, or um, we need to agree that, well, we might just not be able to solve that problem because we might not include something that someone needs or something like this. Um, or they're going to have a custom extension or, I don't know, whatever, something like that is going to happen. We could just create a category where we have ones that are known but not as well defined. And so then we just don't go into the details and they could be defined later. Yeah, I wonder if we can uh, have like use cases and, I don't know, uses or something. So like even the 5.3 TEEP working group use case, right? Uh, in the slides that I presented in the previous intro meeting, it was clear that there was a use case, which was, you know, how do I integrate uh, attestation with remediation? And then there was a specific proposal and a solution where we said, this is the one that probably makes the most sense for TEEP, right? And so that was a particular, sorry, a particular a way to use it with open trust protocol. Um, so that was a particular maybe use. I'm just trying to invent a term here. And so, uh, maybe there's distinctions between use cases and specific uses. So th this is Lawrence Lumblade. Um, I agreed with everything Dave said in his first set of comments. Um, uh, it doesn't seem that critical to me to sort them into background versus passport. Uh, it seems like uh, that could, for a given sort of use case, that it could vary uh, based on business model or something like that. Um, so, I mean, I would, this doesn't seem like a critical uh, sorting criteria to me. It seems like we should be accommodating both uh, in most of our work for both. Most so the reason, no, this is Eric Voigt, and this is Eric Voigt. Uh, I think passport and background check are probably my favorite part of this use case because I, I'm looking at the interaction models between network elements, and the interaction models are very much determined based on the protocols that are choosing how to extract the information. So I'm really a fan of this breakdown. Yeah, yep. this is Dave Thaler. I was going to say that, that uh, I think one of the main values of background check versus passport um, in this type of taxonomy is I think whether it's background check or passport helps to uh, make it easy to understand why some people are looking at trying to standardize evidence and other people are looking at trying to standardize the attestation result. Exactly. And, and I don't think that to address Lawrence, I don't think we're trying to separate them out in order to cross some of them off, if, that, if that's what you're, you're suggesting. Are you? It, it, it's just, it just seems like we want to be flexible and, and accommodating um, no, of, of both models sort of all the time. And most of our standards, 
I mean, a lot of our standards activity um, is around the definition of the of the token, um, and the token is should be neutral to um, you know the claims, the eat, uh, all that should be neutral to the to whether it's background or passport. That's yeah, this is something I agree with Lawrence with this. The the the, the use cases uh, here are not a finite list; they are a good uh, sample of, of what is done, and, and not taking into account uh, other applications. So the the, uh, the each being neutral and accommodating most of this, without respect of background and passport, seems to be a good way to move. Oh, yeah, so I agree, and I think the distinguishing factor here would be how, um, assuming we're using the open trust protocol from the TEEP working group, how you apply those, right? So what does the architecture look like, um, you know, with the background check or the passport? So, so the, the vision here also is for EATS is that they get stuffed into all sorts of other protocols, into extensions and TLS, into HTTP headers, into HTTP bodies. So yep. the, the whole use case could just be it could be driven by how how the eats are getting stuffed into some other protocol and totally out of under, out of control so, or anything so, like that. So but but at no point is there a proposal to have only background checks or only passports. That's what that's what I'm hearing from you, Lawrence. Is that something that we're gonna somehow do one or the other. Is that more complicated? Uh, I'm just wondering we get running a lot of time for uh, I'm, that's that's it. That's the discussion. Slides. But this is a discussion, and there's no other slides anyway. Um, so, I do think it's important, um, and this kind of gets at my message I sent to the list. So, after reading this recent document, Michael, I think you did a really nice job. It's, it's very readable, um, very easy to understand. I think if you were to spell out and have a picture of what background check looks like and passport, how this connects to the Open Trust Protocol and the TEEP working group. And then do additional things like what you did in pointing out the flow, um, the, the flow uh, work from uh, Jessica and with Gus. And um, it would look more like other architecture documents that have been well received by the IESG in that it provides a map of how things are all connected. And I, I think this could do a really good job of that. The language is very accessible. Um, you don't need to invest in a whole new set of language like you do with the architecture document. So I think this could actually make a better, more reachable architecture document to have um, higher deployment and it, um, more people adopting it. So I, I think we'd get a better adoption rate with that kind of structure. So this is uh, Dave. I think the way that I'm interpreting what you said, uh, Kathleen, is um, that uh, the framing here in the use cases um, motivates other things. Not that this is sufficient, but that they would need to add to this the discussion of uh, the roles, um, some of which is in the current architecture document, and then uh, how those relate to uh, one or more use cases to cover the space, like how it relates to a background check um, uh, deployment in, say, the Open Trust Protocol, how it relates to a passport, and maybe one of the passport use cases and so on. Um, am I summarizing your thinking correctly? Because that makes sense to me. Yes. Um, however, I, I like the language choices Michael has used yeah. so far. And so, like, even when I read the role section, I, you know, if I'm having trouble and having to reread things a few times, and I have read thousands of you know, now RFCs um, I, make it more reachable. So yeah. I, I really appreciate the language choices Michael has made in this. Like, like I don't want people to have to learn an entire new language set to adopt this. Um, you know, I know that's common with some protocols, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, this should be pretty simple, right? You use eats in lots of different ways and. Um, you validate them, and you know you move on your merry way. You make this something that we can use as a standard, and EATS could be integrated everywhere so that we don't have companies coming up with their own solutions, which they already have and are continuing to do, right? So time is important. So I think we can get something like this document out faster and more done, um, and I think we'd have less arguments over it. 
So I agree that the use case document was easier for me to read than the architecture draft proposal uh, was uh, harder for me to read. So I agree with that. Uh, if uh, you want to go in this direction, um, as the uh, person that put together the background and passport slides and so on, um, I am happy to help with this if you'd like, meaning if you'd like to uh, have stuff added into here that is a bunch of new text, I am happy to help with that. And I know I just dropped a bomb, right? So mm -hmm. um, I'd love to hear other other thoughts or if people haven't read the use case document that they read it and think about it in this way and they think towards adoption. Part of the Keras workshop that we did a few months back, uh, we looked at what protocols were adopted and, and what were not. Um, there's a clear industry demand for this um, mm -hmm. and that was one of the main factors, but the understandability is another one. I think that I think that what I think we need to do is, is for Hank and I to work together, um, and I'd like to come back to the working group with with some thoughts about that. And maybe come back to what? Sorry. Come back to the working group. Um, just just let us think about the the the, the work involved um, and come back to you. Okay. So I'm not saying yeah, necessarily I mean, to combine other, everything. Other, That's not what I'm proposing. Um, I'd like to lead with this and add in the text that Dave is talking about on background and passport and, you know, emphasize the flexibility of each um, and, and just not make this overcomplicated. Okay, so um, let, me, let me put another option out here, Kathleen. What I'm, what I'm getting, <clears throat> and there was agreement from Dave, is, and, and I've only gotten a chance to skim through both drafts, is that this draft is far more readable than the architecture, uh, and you like the language. However, what I'm hearing is, is it's not quite the architecture that we're looking for. So the other option I would like to propose is that we adopt the language and terminology that's in this draft and um, ensure that the architecture is consistent with that. So I don't see I, any architecture in my document. I don't know well, what that, you'd input. That's, that's the, that, what I'm that's trying to say. I, yeah. So, that, and I'm I, agreeing I, with that, Michael. I'm just. Yeah, you should take a look at both documents. It's kind of hard to do that. And Michael, I think we can make yours uh, more architecture-like, which you know Dave seems to agree just by adding in the background check and passport. Um, you know, and then you're getting into the relationship with the Open Trust Protocol and things like that. And then we do have more of an architecture, and then explicitly express the flexibility for each. Okay, um, we're running out of time on this one. Um, Ned, you're our timekeeper. I, I haven't been keeping track. So I think- yeah, we're, still for, we're in the middle of the, of the architecture draft section. Yeah, okay. So let's give Hank time. Kathleen, we absolutely need to continue this discussion and it flows into the architecture draft. So, but I'd like to give Hank time to provide his view on the architecture and the content and updates to that draft so that we can continue this discussion. Is that okay? No objections? Okay. Let's have Hank move to the architecture so that we can continue on this and potentially other things that arise. Okay, uh, can you share the slides are uploaded or do I have to try to present? Um, I don't see them on the uh, meeting materials yet. I don't see them on meeting materials. Yeah, nobody nobody approved them yet. I, think, I didn't so. see them. That's why I didn't approve them. Sorry, Hank. Oh, they're there. Okay. okay. Maybe the uh, I will look for the approval. 
<clears throat> yeah, I checked five minutes before the meeting, so. Huh. Yeah, well, the, my, my, my tracker says waiting for approval, so maybe that didn't work. I don't know. I can try to present myself because being prepared is helpful. Um, let me find my slides in my application list, and then we can go from there, I hope. Um, Ah, there they are. Okay. Uh, I have to go back, back, back. So am I sharing correctly? Yeah, let's see. Okay, so let's see. Having prepared something is good. So, yeah, I don't know how much relevance in the context of uh, Kathleen's proposal the slide deck has, but let's go through it first. Um, so we did apparently a major refactoring. Uh, we only have uh, two major types that are architectural constituents now that are roles and principles and the messages between them. Principles are basically the buckets you can put roles in and those communicate with each other. So this is more than the background check and the passport model. It allows for uh, literally every kind of combination and message a change, uh, including proxying a lot of stuff, relaying it, vetting it in parallel and yada yada. So uh, it also enables us to uh, avoid specification text about roots of trust and trust anchors because we just introduced a very important, I think, concept that is separating the internals of the attester role there's uh, something in there that it does, does, that, that creates the each, for example, and something that is attested, for example, coordinates. There's, uh, there's always a simple go-to example that has geographic um, coordinates in them, and that is the attested computational environment. These are separate and nothing more. We don't provide any more information here intentionally because separate could at the very minimal be file system permissions in the same computing context, for example. So uh, there is a lot of flexibility to this approach, we think. Um, there were a lot of contributions to this. Uh, I think over 20 people now uh, contributed to this model over the last year. And uh, it re resulted in a simplification of terminology, like a lot. Uh, we are down to four roles and five message types. And uh, consulting with Michael and the use cases, parsing them a lot of times and putting them through all the uh, solution creators, including, uh, I hope, Fido and Eat, which is uh, sometimes a little bit hard to get a feedback from. Um, this maps to all of them. So uh, at the moment, uh, some use cases only differentiate themselves between each other by a different composition of roles and not workflows. And that is uh, accommodated by the current architecture text, basically the four roles and five messages. So that maps to Teep. Apparently, Dave got it and, and he was able to map it. It apparently maps to FIDO unless uh, Lawrence uh, um, objects to this. And it is uh, mapping the complete space of TCG TPM based attestation and TEE based attestation evidence. Um, so that's nice. Uh, therefore, we have, oh, uh, there's a case of EYO, I see here. So it should be uh, able to map each, the open trust platform protocol uh, version two, uh, that might be cheap version one at some point. It most certainly maps the RIF case. It maps Chara, which I will come to later, and uh, all the Yang realm content and RPCs we, are created, we have created already in that are uh, already progressing. Yeah, yeah. This is Gary here. I don't believe it does map to FIDO. I cited the example yesterday of yeah. the uh, Android Safety Net attestation where the attested and the attest uh, attested computing environment and the attester are one and the same. So uh, it's not, I mean, if that's your, if that's the goal of this document, then we need to make sure that it, uh, then we need to make sure that uh, at least the uh, ter terminology that's been defined is actually consistent. Um, yes. Of course, it doesn't have to be the goal of the tri document either. It could be that, well, okay, we view things such as Android, Android safety net as being outside of scope. Yeah, I, I read the <clears throat> safety net. I, I put a mail to the list. So safety net uh, itself says it is not an attestation. 
Um, so that, that's kind of a contradiction I was not able to resolve. It just says it's a claim set and please use Keystore to make this attestation. It's, it's literally in the description of SafetyNet. Um, so I was a little bit, uh, I didn't know how to deal with that. So I need more input about that. And we as a, a group most certainly need to understand this better. But at the moment, the safety net seems to be the claim set and the attestation seems to be based on the key store uh, element of this. That is my, my, my high, 10 mile high overview. Um, and, and most certainly uh, proposals of texts are the only way to remediate this because I don't know how to phrase it better. Um, and so if it's, if it's a transparency and if, if separate on a file system permission level is not enough, then I don't know what is enough. Well, um, well, so we I have to resolve it on the list. It's a matter of clarifying the scope of the document, right? Because uh, I view safety net as, as um, you know, a little, bit, a little bit more sophisticated form of self-attestation. And even FIDO has this concept of self-attestation, which is basically self-signing. A lot of, you know, and a lot of security experts I've heard find that uh, absolutely worthless from a, from a security perspective, but it's there. So I think if we're, that's what I'm saying. Are we going to cover cases that, uh, that maybe do not add sufficient security value, or are we going to cover everything that you see in, uh, you know, in specifications like FIDO? Uh, so, so I think no, sorry. this is net. The, the question that was asked is, does the architecture cover the, the scenario where the attested environment is the same as the attesting environment? And it does because we have the ability to distinguish the two. We can always say that, that in some implementations, those two environments are combined, one and the same, and that there are security issues associated with combining them. Uh, that, that's, that seems like that fits into this overall point that the architecture we have is able to describe even the FIDO case. And yeah, okay. you can this, is not, this is not one architecture to rule uh, everything to become the same case. This is a set of tools to put together that are used to solve specific, well, actually use cases in, in the different communities. So not every component of the architecture necessarily is used by everybody. Yes, indeed. It is a composability here. You can leave out uh, roles. You can even com collapse uh, the, the attesting and attested uh, environment if you really need to. The architecture does not spell that out. It's a separate. But we can highlight if you don't separate them, you have a security issue. But still, you have to have this level of assurance. You have to, to, to highlight that at some point. So if you're highlighting it, it's OK. If you're not highlighting it, it's kind of fishy. So, so time-wise, we're at state 13, we're past the architecture draft time slot, and we're running into the interaction model time slot. But you can use the time how you yeah. prefer. I, I need less time for the, for the subsequent presentations, anticipating that we will run over time, of course. <laughs> so um, according to uh, all the inputs that is uh, in parallel to Kathleen's uh, latest uh, suggestion or proposal is that we uh, move all the terms up to provide a better overview and then immediately start to relate all the terms to make a better uh, um, relationship between all these terms. That is basically what the use cases are, I think, as least as, as I think Michael would agree with this. Please, please just drop in a no if this is not true. So um, we try to abstract uh, the use cases and the roles there, and therefore we uh, have a very limited set of terms now, which are nine. And uh, we, you can combine them in any case you want, and you can leave a lot of them out in your workflow solution. And you even complex the attesting and attested stuff. It's not spelled out, but certainly possible, with the exception, again, you have to highlight that you're not being separate if you do this. Otherwise, it is not valid evidence, and you cannot put trust within this properties on it. Um, Again, this is a complement of those diagrams because this should go up in the architecture to uh, uh, reduce the uh, learning curve that we are encountering today. Um, there's another discussion about standard or informational that does not have to be here. 
I think we can skip it for the sake of time. I just wanted to highlight the architecture does not have to be standard track if it is possible to uh, formulate um, requirements on the solutions that are like an attester must be able to create attestation evidence and attestation evidence has certain qualities. For example, the attesting and attested environment are not separate. That is a very important quality to the evidence. That is very important to the post processes. If you don't know that, you cannot trust that and put no trust mechanism to this. Um, if you do express that, for example, with each claims, you're golden. If you do not, it is impossible to distinguish evidence that is trustworthy from one that has that might have, so to speak, security issues, as I heard from Yuri. Um, but that's okay. Uh, and that is the only prescriptiveness that the architecture should do ever and nothing more. And as, as I heard, we have to go back to the AD probably to let that be confirmed because I don't really know how uh, um, BCP 14 terminology in an informational document works actually. And I have not met yet one individual that could explain that to me like in a nutshell. And so this might be a topic. Um, moving on. Um, so questions for the architecture and the nine concepts, which are four roles and five message types uh, that are basically derived from the use cases. Um, is this not it, clear it, enough? It, does it make sense for the use cases to describe to be described using these terms? Yes, it would make a lot of sense, but then they would not be use cases anymore. But scenario descriptions, like use case, usage scenarios, use cases are intended to be not using the terminology of the actual solution because they are only a story. Then you map them to the unifying part that is the architecture. So if you're going with usage scenarios here, you can use that terminology already. But I think that's not the definition of a use case anymore. But that's only <laughs> me. We can bring this to the list. I don't know. Right. The intention of the of the architecture and the use cases is to be able to, <clears throat> one you know one informs the other, and, uh, and it helps get people using uh, common terminology. <clears throat> so I'm wondering if it makes sense for there to be a usage scenarios uh, section somewhere. So this is Kathleen. I. I'm just going to disagree with Hank that we need to have a completely new defined set of terminology that is confusing and hard to reach, and that makes it an architecture. So um, I don't agree with that. I, I think you can define an architecture and allow it to be reachable. And um, you know, I'm just picturing it going off. If, if Dave Thaler and I both have had trouble reading the document, a lot of other people will. We have both read a significant number of documents. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I just Let me highlight, it is not finished yet. All the composition, for example, that Dave is proposing are not in there yet. We pulled them all out to boil it down to a nucleus that we can start again with. So it is probably not matching all the use cases at the moment because we pulled that out to give you the pure essence that was refined from the use cases. Mapping them back to them is, of course, an important task of the architecture. So I don't know where to start. If we want to do the, the use case document, I'm not really convinced because they are basically evolving to user scenarios and the use uh, the architecture itself most certainly needs better mapping to use cases. So maybe both documents merge and that I think is what uh, Michael was uh, highlighting or like indicating. Please again, stop me if I'm saying something wrong here, Michael and, and uh, readability of something that is actually complicated and not simple is a little bit of a learning curve. I agree with that. And, I think it's uh, been made overly complicated though. I don't think it has to be as hard as it is. Um, and personally, what I would like to see is um, if Dave is willing to uh, make the additions to the use case document to see if that could be a more reachable architecture document with the suggestions. So, uh, you know, and then we can compare the two. You should do one step after the other and first of all, uh, discuss the initial proposal on the list and see how- I put it out there, yep. 
yeah, yeah, but there was no chance to, to, to react to this, I think. So maybe we, we keep that as a actual proposal going on and see how this works. And if there is enough agreement, we can mold the use cases and derive terminology from them and do the architecture there. That is, I think that the end result would look quite similar, but it's a different approach. I agree with that. Well, one is to simplify the language um, by not introducing too much. So, um, Dave, are you willing to, to give that a try and then we can um, look at the two documents as architecture documents and see which would go forward? Um, if you'd like me to do that, yes, because I have to, because none of the documents other than the text that uh, Michael mentioned that he added in that he does not, did not expect to be in the use case, um, I, I do want to write some text about background check and uh, passport, especially as it relates to TEEP, and I guess uh, Michael has a little bit of that, but yet, the short answer is yes, because I was uh, hoping to write some text anyway. Okay, great, thank you. Good. Yeah, the, the, something to look at is always better. I think, and so you can compare it. Uh, moving on, um, interaction model in this case uh, is progressing. Um, we adapted maybe, uh, uh, I don't know if how valid this is now, uh, the uh, architecture terminology. Uh, it's not, we are not through the whole document yet, but the uh, major chunk of it is now aligned. And we have running code for the interaction model, which is uh, basically a, a co-op seaboard CDL based um, implementation that is viable to be integrated in firmware and uh, can run out of the box. It is there and you can test it all the time. Um, it's literally using the architecture terminology and the interaction model described in the apparently interaction model draft. Um, it's BSD3, so everybody is at the leisure to use it. And uh, if you do not have any requirements in hardware, uh, we provide uh, simulators and emulators to uh, in a Docker version to test this uh, live on any box you have. There's an interesting uh, benefit to this because you have a hands-on feeling how this works. Um, I don't know today if OT, um, our OLTP versus uh, two, version two is capable of relaying all the information we need. And most certainly it is perceived as a chip vendor protocol that is not necessarily used in all the domains beyond that. Um, if we can make that work, that's nice. I'm not sure if we, uh, because we want to have an inclusion here and, and it be basically being a convergence point of multiple uh, RAMs, SDOs and solutions, if that works out at the end. But I like to be convinced otherwise because I really want to see this work at the end. Um, can, can, the, you comment, yeah? can, you, can you comment on how interaction model uh, relates to Android Keystore and Fido and, and uh, other use cases? I mean, uh, my understanding is interaction model is supposed to be a general thing. So it, it would be need to, I mean, uh, you know, need to relate to the, the, the big use cases like Android Key Store. Uh, interaction models uh, are the edges between roles where messages are effectively relayed. So it comes into this picture as a message. And the interaction model is basically highlighting how these messages are uh, queried, uh, may, they may be even uh, um, pushed if you use time-based or other approaches, which is the next slide because there will be more than one model we uh, realized. Uh, we are starting with a challenge response nonce one. It's a often probably most used model, but it's rather underspecified because there is never a reference model document you can point to, like we are doing it this way, so we just build it here. But there are flavors of this, like the direct anonymous attestation. There is also the ephemeral key dice attestation approach. Uh, and there is a unidirectional time-based approach that are not covered in the interaction model document yet. So with respect to FIDO, you can choose any interaction you want. It can be a challenge response, it can be just a push, it can be a, a ephemeral key store, it can be an effective key store, it can be certificate-based or it can not be certificate-based in the case of DAA. There are a lot of flavors here that uh, would allow you to compose the workflow and re-establish or map the workflow FIDO. Well, one, one would expect that the interaction model would be able to implement the um, 
you know, the, I don't know what we're calling them, but, but basically the passport model and, and the, the background check model, those are, those are, you know, stylized interactions that, you know, apparently apply to lots of use cases. So it seems like the interaction model ought to be focusing on those stereotypical interactions, given that we can see that there's a mapping to the use cases. Exactly. Uh, that's why the list uh, advanced. We were only annoyed that there was no challenge response reference interaction model, but now we realize there are a lot of flavors here that are not all covered in the use case document yet um, that are also used today in production, and we cannot just leave them out. And some yeah. of them most certainly map do not map to OGRP, unfortunately. <laughs> hey, hey this, is, this is Gary here. I might have interject, but I mean, this is... I think, yeah, yeah, I like reading the interaction model. It's, it, it, it's informative. I understand it, but this is actually uh, an example, in my opinion, of where we get into trouble when we try to actually be prescriptive on terminology. Um, assertion, as it's defined here, is not the same as an assertion defined in the FIDO context, because assertion um, an assertion can only be generated uh, almost always after a user verification operation has been uh, performed. Um, because yep. the talking indicator is specific. Yeah, so, we are not using assertions at all anymore. We, we, we mapped to that because we're using claims now. Well, looking at yeah, the, yeah, yeah, a, a FIDO assertion is, def, is definitely a different thing, and 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 uh, we just have to keep those those terminologies separately. They're they're just they're just two different. You know, uh, yeah, that's the same word for different things, and 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 we're not going to resolve that one. We're not going to resolve it, and that's why it shouldn't even be a. It, we shouldn't even talk about normative, uh, normative terminology. We should just say this is in this context. That's it, and we, uh, and not, uh, otherwise we're otherwise you're going to run into these uh, run into these issues. What's being defined as an assertion in the context of interaction is very uh, it, it, in this document is very different from what FIDO uh, FIDO defines as an assertion. And the call, even though the call flows could actually look all, uh, very similar. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, so, so back to the back to the, I, I think the the interaction model should have examples from Android attestation in particular because that's that's uh, probably easier to figure out and yes. and APIs are there you can actually do implementations with it and it, it I mean I would like to see that line items that say this is this is how it describes Android attestation. If, if an expert in Android attestation would be able to provide the interaction model that is being conducted and how it differs from the others, that would be awesome because then we have a relatively complete list how he's on the, he's on, he's on the list. He's, 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 the guy who he managed the whole thing is on the list. Sorry? I mean, I, I would be willing to do it, if, but I, I just have too, too much other work to do. Um, Android attestation is documented. There, there are public documents and APIs. They're probably a lot easier to read than the FIDO stuff. But I'm, I, I, I'm saying the guy that wrote the documentation is on our mailing list. Oh, I know. Has posted about it. I know, but he doesn't. Yeah, have so I think he, he, he will. So just okay. to contact, we're uh, in the middle of, we're, in the middle of the Yang module draft time slot now. That is good because that is only one slide, no problem. So um, I know that people shy away from using uh, a complicated set of terminology. Again, this is nine terms and uh, try to map them to existing solutions. But I, what I hear in this call right now is a strong focus on FIDO and we Android. try to be inclusive, yeah. and, and, and Android uh, key uh, store and the um, safety net version. Although safety net is, as you just said, uh, just a claim set and not evidence. No, uh, there's, the, there's the core Android model that's not safety net. Safety net. That's the one that's really the Android key store. That's really the one that probably yeah. is the most general and broad that really should be most looked at. And yeah, it's and most accessible. Be, and then using that. If it diverges from a interaction model you can find, we need a contributor that really spells that out. Uh, just saying it is defined somewhere else is not creating a conversion point here. It just creates separate solutions that are not interoperable anymore. So the conversion point has to be re retained, I think. Otherwise, we will 
basically abandon the advantage of having interoperability. That's everything basically I'm saying here. We can have separate solutions that works on their own domain. That is okay. And we can hope for adoption or we can include existing solutions. That's, the, that's basically the idea of the interaction model draft and which is, which is a, a longer arm of the uh, architecture actually. Um, moving on, uh, the Yang module will only be a status update. So uh, there have been two reviews, which is very nice, but not enough. So uh, uh, I think the lower, lower, lower limit was like three reviews. And uh, I think until the next ITF meeting, we will get another review that should be possible. Um, what I can report is that there is uh, actually multiple prototyping efforts in production environments already, and they are progressing fast. Um, the output will be more complicated um, um, role compositions than passport or background check, but they will always somehow be related to those. That is true, but uh, calling them just hybrid would not be enough. And I'm reluctant to go into composite device definition because that's kind of easy. My only question is, uh, does the use case document cover them, uh, AKA does the uh, uh, architecture document cover them because those two will converge. That is what the plan originally also. And um, I'm not sure if it's valid or useful or beneficial to, to introduce uh, the idea that a tester is a composite device and that there are multiple things that been, can be attested to by multiple, let's call them principles again, because that's why the red architecture is flexible, um, that could attest for some of these subcomponents and composite devices. I'm not sure if that's relevant to the architecture. Probably it would be over engineering, maybe, but the notion was raised, so I'm raising it. It was the only thing I was not sure about because that, so that's an item. Um, otherwise, the Yang module needs more text. We are aware of that. Uh, also, uh, reviews show us yes, they need more text, and um, it, it will be provided by other contributors than me, and it is in the queue. So uh, this will be done until the next meeting also, and then the Yang module will have a relatively stable state that is according to already adopted terminology. I'm sorry to say this, but uh, the uh, role uh, terminology, for example, as a, as a, as a nucleus already uh, was, is infused in under SDOs and, um, and the uh, solutions that are created in prototyping at the same point of, time, point of time. And that's basically me. So I hope I uh, did some racing here for you to have more time for the rest. Mm -hmm. So on the on your last question, this is Dave Thaler. Um, I think the working group did have previous discussion. I'm thinking it was the last face-to-face -face meeting about uh, different types of uh, compositions of claim sets, whether there was nesting or chaining or whatever. And I think for that discussion, which of course may be in you know the eat document or whatever, I think that does have some. Uh, does warrant some architectural discussion to motivate why that's interesting. So in other words, um, is there benefit to introduce the concept of, I don't know if composite devices is the right word, but I think there is a benefit to introducing whatever is necessary to understand the use case for having um, more complex arrangements of uh, whether it's EATS or claim sets or whatever term that you want to use. I think there is some impact on the architecture document to motivate that. Um, I have to think about what the right way to describe that is, but I do think that there is a, that there is a benefit to introduce something there, and I have to think about that. Okay. Hi, this is Eric. Okay. I'm back. Uh, there's a couple things that uh, I, I think would give you examples of that, and they were hit on the use case document. We have multiple uh, TPM equivalent ships in our platforms, and how do you get in a unified set of claims from different ships pushed out? And these are mostly TPM2 types rather than EAP types. Um, a passport attestation, uh, as well as um, uh, key provisioning, and especially for virtual and physical. How do you handle uh, the assembly of virtual and physical attestation going off device? So there's a lot of cases where we need to do assemblies uh, for more complex network elements, and these are not really using the EAT stuff. These are using the the 
right, you know, the normal stuff that would come off a of TPM two, and this is this is today's stuff that we're doing. Yeah, agree. <laughs> so I, I was going to ask, kind of how how we see this Yang document relating to the eight document. I mean, my my understanding is Yang is basically documenting the claims that exist today in TPM chips that can't really be changed. Um, and uh, EAT is defining a, a different way of doing claims. And they're, I it almost seems like a bit of ships in the night. Um, I'm not really sure how to relate them. <clears throat> well, the yeah. approach was to use the architecture for this. So you can always map them to the no, four no, and five no, corners. Like, you, you know, they, claim X in E is the same as claim Y in in Yang interaction. That 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 architecture is not going to do that. The, um, I'm 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 I have a difficult time to produce the information model you're proposing there. Um, that would be possible, but they're most certainly not the same implementation or solution, unfortunately. I mean, if, there's, if they really are ships in the night, and that's, that's, what, that's, that's fine, I mean, I, and, and that's, we agree that we can't ever, you know, make them connect up, then, okay, that's it. Again, the actual is for, role is this for human? Is this roughly. for humans to understand? Uh, so, I, so, I think, uh, you know, we, in terms of time, we're going to, we're going to, Go into the next section, which is a discussion on information model. It seems like we're going in that direction anyway. So, uh, and for that discussion, if we're going to take it to the list, um, if Dave or some representative from the TEEP working group might be able to chime in, since we do have TEE vendors working in that forum who have agreed to split out attestation to route. Um, do they plan to use this or not? Right. So, those would be really good questions to. Um, understand. So having some interaction from the team working group might be good on those questions. Right. So I would think understand that, that, that uh, not all TE work is done in, I mean, there's a lot of TE work that is not related to TEEP. So what, yeah. we, what we determined yeah. was that the, the TEEP working group believed that they had a set of claims that they wanted to define uh, that was within their scope. There's the set of claims that are in the in the eat draft there's presumably a set of claims that are in the yang module draft model draft as well um, i think that sort of suggests that the way forward in terms of information model is that that there can be multiple um, uh, drafts that that capture both the information model and then some sort of binding to a, 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 a uh, using a data mo uh, modeling language, but that it should be clear in the draft what the what the claims are at, uh, expressed at an information model you know, level of abstraction, so that somebody reading the drafts could be able to compare them and understand what the semantics are, and if there are overlapping semantics, I think that would be a, a case where we would want the RATS working group would want to look at them and say, uh, does it make sense to have <clears throat> different drafts that are that are defining the same semantics, but are that differ in terms of their data model. Um, you know, maybe we can work to 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 simplify so that we're not we're not we're not you know defining the same thing differently in multiple uh, cases. That was the con that was one of the concerns that we had uh, going into the discussion at the last face to face. Should we have a single information model? Uh, document and and the feedback was on the list and other places was no that probably doesn't make sense uh, but we should we should at least have some um, you know um, best best known methods for expressing what the claims are in the different drafts so that they are easily compared and understood at least at a semantic level. The only thing we should yeah, avoid. I like your proposal ships in the night if we uh, diverge and cannot compare anymore the solutions are literally separate and I think that is the most important thing we want to try to avoid maybe it's possible maybe it's not 
<clears throat> so is is the is there an action item for the uh, Yang module draft to uh, you know, create a section that says here's the information model and these are the claims? Yeah, I was asking a lot of each question lately, and that was going into the direction of using an information model for the Yang module here. Um, I think it might be possible. It also anticipates let, let, let me, the future. Let me add something there. Because, yeah, okay, sorry. There, there doesn't have to be one Yang module. There's plenty of groups that have multiple Yang modules. Uh, a lot of carriers, uh, sorry, a lot of uh, vendors who are on the draft really are hoping just for the basic TPM interactions with TPM 1.1 and 1.2 to standardize. I wouldn't necessarily force it into a single Yang module. In fact, I'm hoping that we still just can adopt the current module because it accomplishes something very necessary for getting information to and from TPM 1.2 and, and 2.0 devices without with just getting vendor interoperability for things that are on the ground. So. I, I think even with these longer term issues, there's no reason that this would preclude just adopting a, a model which lets us have a, a common view of those older equipment types. Is it, yeah, is there so I would like to hear what Lawrence, Lawrence's opinion is on how to go about this from his previous statements. Is it an update to this? Is it a separate document? Sure, I really have that much of an opinion um, at this point. Um, it seems like the claim set for, for TPMs is kind of fixed. You can't really do much with it, right? Um, so One thing we can do, I mean, the idea, even though the claim set's fixed, the Yang model has a lot of other stuff for RPC elements and uh, elements going back and forth. So even if it's fixed, there is quite a number of Yang models that could be exposing the same information from different vendors. Just nailing down that is a reasonable amount of work and, and useful in of itself, even with the, with the fixed elements out of that TPM. The interaction model supported by the router can be very different. You might want to read stuff uh, from the current chip. You might want to do an R RPC to pull information out. So there's still plenty of work in just nailing down the current Right, and that's like all. Uh, so in the in the like Android attestation world, we don't specify any of that stuff. We don't care about that stuff because it's all application specific, all run in HTTP uh, transactions and headers, and, and you know it's like your banking app has got an interaction model, and your your uh, United Airlines app has an interaction model, and all of that stuff is just, we don't care about any of that. All we just care about is defining the, the claim format and let, letting those apps, those Android apps, interact however they want, all over the place. Um, so th that's, that's kind of the view from that world. You know, you're uh, in the router world, I mean, it sounds like you're really talking about building, a, you know, the whole very fine-grained, uh, detailed, uh, uh, conveyance protocol parts for uh, TPMs in routers. So, like I said, that maybe these really are ships in the night. And um, but I, you know, I think maybe there, there's a uh, maybe there's a vision here. I mean, I can't really speak for it myself um, because I'm not that. But you know, TPMs are limited in what they can do now. Maybe we move to to something that's a lot more powerful than TPMs in terms of ability to express claims, and that's where we would want to look at how the claims that are in TPMs today relate to how the claims that are def being defined for EAT. I mean, that would be would be my my interest in all of this. Um, the the sort of RPC back and forth interaction model that seems like that should be factored out, and that's kind of a that's an that's a conveyance protocol for claims or for tokens for TPMs for routers. That's kind of a specific thing. And maybe it's, as I said, maybe these are ships in the night, except for trying to understand how the claims could be similar. So there's a transition plan from TPM-based claims to EAT-based claims. I see what you're saying. There certainly is a need now for the vendors who want to talk to and from TPMs to have a, a transport model mapped, which is why the, what the Yang model came from. I mean, the Yang model started in, yeah. in the vendor um, 
community for routers, and we want to have a common one across the routers. That's why I came to this group. I, I think that others might also want that. It, it seems pretty straightforward, honestly. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I could see that. So the, the the term ships in the night is this re essentially referring to the fact that that different you know, the, the, the d d different applications of a technology don't necessarily have to interoperate and, and therefore yeah, maybe yes. to try and create standards that, re that expect interoperability where not is really expected. Point is they can't fire can I think each other. Oh, sorry, Michael, again? Michael, you're on mute oh. if you're trying to speak. Okay. So in any case, yeah, um, I changed headsets and ah. it didn't work. Well, I think the, the the two major ships we're talking about in a way are kind of TPM based claims and EAT based claims. In 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 theory, an EAT based claim is supposed to be independent of a root of trust, and there's nothing that prevents a TPM or some other uh, some other a uh, component that would assert itself as a root of trust to implement an e-claim. I think the, the the reality is that because there's such a large installed base of a particular type of, you know, root of trust, that ch changing an installed base has, you know, challenges. It's, you can't just change you can't change over an, uh, an installed base. Uh, it doesn't mean that that couldn't change in the future, uh, um, given you know given that there's um, uh, some clear standards for defining, you know, the, di the various, the, the different claims that are that are useful and, and, and can be interoperable. Well, well, for a TPM to be able to create some of the the claims that are defined in EAT would require um, uh, new hardware definitions. That's a, you know, yeah. not only that, it, it requires the signature to be able to apply it to the claim set. Yeah, because. This is yeah. a this is a trustworthy function on the system. There's not a, no no signing fool allowed here. Maybe maybe it is because we are allowing a testing a tested environment to collapse, but still um, there there should be indicated as a level of assurance. And uh, if we do so, it has to highlight that uh, not every hardware system can sign arbitrary data that some evidence is bound to the functions that they are um, deployed with today. And in the ideal world, everything would be able to create each and uh, assign them. But that's just not the case. And also, each are not always transported in the same interaction model. That's a fact. And so if you are not taking this into account, you're creating a domain-specific solution for Android. <clears throat> okay, so I have, I guess, two questions then. One is um, from the TEEP working group. We have hardware vendors working together there with their starting point as the Open Trust Protocol. Um, they have handed off the attestation piece for us within that protocol, um, knowing that hardware would have to be updated. Is this something that they're planning on? So T or, uh, I, I don't think it's correct to say that the hardware needs to be updated. I think it can be done just as a pure software operation. Yeah, TEE because hardware. Because it's the TEE, and not the yeah. TPM. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The only thing that you need the well, to be clear, the only thing that you need the hardware to be updated for is if the hardware provides some of the information that goes in the evidence. Okay. Now, the thing that the relying party consumes, right, which is the TAM and the TEEP case, the thing that the relying party consumes is the attestation result. What goes in the attestation result may have no impact whatsoever. Uh, sorry, what the hardware says, says in the evidence may have no uh, direct, may or may not have any direct impact on the literal content of the attestation result, right? That depends on what you define the attestation result to contain. That's what the TAM actually consumes. Okay, great. So then that's possible. And then the other use case on, well, I guess there's lots of use cases. So then the other piece where you're talking about systems um, and where interoperability might be important, one thing that I, I personally think is very important is the supply chain where you have software modules able to provide an attestation on, you know, what they expect the, the code to look like so that it could be verified. 
Now, if organizations are doing that on a global basis, they have to, you know, do this verification. And if it's all done similarly, then they can have a level of assurance on their running software. But if it's done with all different types of claims, then we're in trouble, right? right? Just the software, the security industry is a mess as it is. Um, I think we could use this as an opportunity if this gets adopted with a single format to sort that for the supply chain use case. With format, do you mean file. data model, like, 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 like the wire format, or do you mean like uh, the semantics of the thing? Uh, I mean, ultimately both, but I mean, uh, I mean, you, you need the, the on the wire format to be understood for inter interoperability. Um, so, uh, yeah, and if you were going to collect those all into, let's say, a repository and do your analysis, having a consistent is really important. Um, you know, this is why we have a problem with SACM and um, exactly. Current standards. It's, yeah. and it's too difficult, and there's too uh, there's different ways to do it depending on the operating system, um, and it's got to be managed separately, right? So creating something that can be managed within a normal IT management system for the enterprise, like if this was added into some type of configuration management system as an expected piece, and not like some special security service then we'll be doing the enterprises a favor in terms of being able to provide a level of assurance of systems that they know what they expect to see um, in a consistent way. Yeah, and this this is really the, the 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 reason why I wanted to see each standardized. I mean, that's to me that's the core work. Yes, I totally agree. So thank you, Lawrence, so for all your work. <laughs> yeah. So to summarize, it it seems like what we're saying is there's could be value in having a industry standard representation for the information that a manufacturer produces, uh, what the architecture would call um, um, endorsements. Uh, that, that was out of scope for this group initially. Um, I, I'm not sure how we want to sort of disposition the conversation given that, that it seems like we're, we're running into a, a topic that's out of scope. So yeah, I didn't think it was out of scope. Uh, yeah, so I didn't either. And if EAT is defined to do that specifically, then it would be kind of silly to put that out of scope. Yeah, you can, of course, like create endorsement is very important. Yeah, I, I think endorsement uh, documents are possible to be created with EAT. And if they are separate from the point to create evidence, that is easier, actually. And that would go down into the realm of concise identities or other uh, CWT formats that are already existing um, and uh, some are stuck in ISG at some time. Well, but, I um, think that we need yeah. to make it so complicated, as Lawrence said, EAT was designed for that purpose. So I think, you know, if the use case document were able to spell out how that happens, I think we might be fine. <laughs> I'm not sure if we can have adoption of EAT as endorse as a sole endorsement document. Again, it's evidence and not that actually, but, but you can use it for the format you can use for that. I, I'm agreeing with that. Um, there has to be a lot of other existing things for like 20 years to be taken into account and just cutting that off hard will not uh, ease adoption. It will be probably a showstopper actually, I think. So we're in the middle of Lawrence's time. Um, so I'm going to pause and ask Lawrence what what do you want to do. Um, I think I can do something useful in a few minutes if I can get my uh, if I can share for share for a few minutes. So um, I'd like to go for it. Okay. Are you able to take take the ball? Uh, let me see if I can, if I can do that. Um, Yeah, I'm trying to share, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's like you're sharing. You're sharing something. Is it? Uh, I can't tell what I'm sharing. You're sharing your desktop. It looks like we can see a browser with a list of issues. Just the browser, or the whole desktop? Um, there's multiple pages on the desktop. Uh, can you maybe just 
just expand that window to cover everything. All right. <laughs> a little weird, but. Just doing a time check. We only have five minutes left. Understood. Okay. okay can you see that this, this is just the open issues list for uh, each. Can you see that in a clear way? Yes. Close enough. Okay. So um, I've sorted out the the open issues into kind of three categories. Um, there's those those that are uh, new claims. So these are new claims that are not defined in the EAT document. Um, some of them are easy to add, like uh, boot seat is probably easy to add. Um, some of them are going to, to me, are going to be uh, like months and months of work, like um, uh, software inventory. Um, software inventory seems really important to me, uh, particularly for Eric's use cases um, and a lot of things people are expecting out of attestation. Um, so uh, what I'm kind of hoping is that the uh, the, the claims or the claims God, the, the issues that are listed here are when we finish all these issues we finished eat. That's kind of what I'm trying to trying to have it set up for. So so if there's a claim that you want and you don't see it listed in the eat document or in the issues here, please say something in you know file an issue or something like that. And you know maybe there's some some claims in the Yang document that are not represented here. That would be that would be cool to have them here. Um, then uh, the other ones are um, issues that are uh, I've marked ready to close. Um, I I don't know what we have in terms of closure policy on these things. Um, a lot of them are ready to close because I, of the assumption that they were going to go in the architecture document. Um, that seems a little open ended today, so I'm probably not going to go close them for that reason. And then the, the other ones the, that don't have a, a label on them are issues that um, need some design, some work, um, some editing. I have not sorted them out as, as to um, like text editing versus engineering design, because um, some of them are just text editing and some of them are engineering design. Um, so uh, I'm going to point out the UEID one here, um, should UEIDs be larger than 128 bits? Um, I'm going to kind of racing through here. Um, there's some comments back and forth. Um, I, I have a pull request on this now with uh, some uh, analysis uh, uh, based on the birthday attack and, and stuff. So trying to get that to, to drive that to closure. Um, uh, Anyway, uh, so generally, um, that's the uh, you know where I'm trying to where I'm trying to go with the issues. Um, tr trying to balance my time working on these issues and keeping them organized and uh, commenting on architecture and use cases. Um, but uh, I'm trying to make the, the this set of uh, issues be you know once we once we close all these issues, then the eat document is done. I, I'm I'm sure there's going to be new issues. So, so the call to action is. Uh, for folks on the list, call to action is review the, the set of issues. Uh, if you have issues you want to add, please contribute them and uh, comment on the, on, the, on the ones that are there. And at some point, it makes sense for the, for the working group to consider each claim and uh, approve or, or, or not approve the, the claims that are there. Is that yeah, 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 and and particularly, I mean, I, I think the biggest one of the biggest actions is is you know if you think about the claims that that are necessary for use cases. I mean, I, I'm I'm doing this too, but think about the claims that are necessary for use cases, and see if those claims are missing in uh, in the document or in the uh, in the issues list. Um, so we kind of have a scope of how many claims we're going to define and all that. Um, okay. So uh, we have one minute left. Uh, let's take that one minute to, to briefly summarize next steps. Um, so uh, clearly reading the drafts are, are important next steps. Participating in the, in the uh, issues or the eat draft part of next steps. Are there other next steps we want to throw out? Yeah, this is Hank. I would like to uh, have a, a more concise proposal how to use the use case document as an architecture or how to merge them. Because I am not sure this will work. 
And uh, Kathleen's proposal is somehow a little bit between the lines, I think. So Kathleen, maybe if you would be so kind and propose the way forward that you are envisioning and as an ex explicit extension to your first email, that would be, I think, something the list can uh, uh, read and parse better. Would that be okay? Sure. So, I thought that was pretty clear, but I'll just send a quick summary, and Dave said he'd take a stab at it. So I think you'll get to see the example of that very soon anyway. Yeah, I, I, I actually heard two things. Um, you were going to think up with Michael on what it would take. Dave also, and I would suggest you include Dave, is he also agreed um, after Kathleen's question, since he was going to contribute some text anyway, um, that he could contribute to that discussion. Yeah, could we see, I, I guess I would personally like to see what um, Dave comes up with adding to Michael's document as a first step. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Guys, we're, we're, we're over time. Yeah. So um, we didn't quite cover. So I don't think we're quite ready to do the call for adoption on any of the drafts unless um, other people think otherwise. So we will ask that question again on, um, well, the architecture will be tabled, but the question goes to the information model and the Yang module drafts. Could, how about we set a goal of doing this at the face-to-face, uh, -face? and for some of us, we'll be remote, but yes. um, you know, having the use case document a little further along, um, to have that as a, a possibility as well and see where we're at. Okay, let's just make it an assertion, Kathleen. <laughs> So by our face-to-face -face meeting, ITF 106, we want to be able to have the readiness for call for adoption on the Yang module, the interaction, and then um, have the discussion and decision on the use case and architecture drafts. Is that fair? I think so, but I'm not one of the authors, so. Well, it seems like I will be the lone person sharing, but you guys will be on the WebEx, so. <clears throat> yes. Okay, anything else? We're gonna call it. All right, thank you. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you all. Bye, thank you.